Arsenal 3, Southampton 3, another third consecutive draw, you know, in a row that has gone ahead to see Arsenal drop six out of the possible nine points that would have gone ahead to gather in these games they've been playing in the Premier League. March day 30th, March day 31 and March day 32 have all end in stalemate for Arsenal. Liverpool 2-2, West Ham 2-2 today at Emirates. A game that we all thought that Arsenal is going to go ahead and really make a big statement that they want to win the trophy. They've gone ahead to capitulate, crumble and they've just found themselves coming back to really level and leave it late with a stalemate at the Emirates. Welcome to this channel as Rokan Media Football. How are you guys? I know you're watching us from. I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on this channel. So guys, <clears throat> Arsenal have really gone ahead to really give up on the title according to me. Now, it's out of their hands. It's in the hands of City because right now Arsenal is having 70 is Arsenal is having 75 points and City is having <coughs> 70 points. If City go ahead and really win their game, <coughs> their two games they have in hand, they'll be ahead of Arsenal. And what does that mean? Arsenal need to go away and really beat City. This is where things have gone ahead to pan out and really turn out to be because Arsenal have been petulant today. They've given away all the three goals. We are giveaways. <coughs> the first goal... Aaron Ramsdale gave away the ball to Alcaraz. Second one, it is Martin Odegaard threw the ball at the half at the center line. And obviously, Theo Walcott, the former Gunnar, went ahead to make it to nil for Southampton. And then Martinelli pulled one back. After Martinelli pulled one back, Thomas Partey just gave away another ball. A corner came in through. They capitalized onto that and made it 3-1 for Arsenal. Then Arsenal had to fight back around the 8th, minute. It was Martin Odegaard. It was Martin Odegaard who really went in through and obviously did the need for and really put in an effort that saw everyone get back to the stadium. Even the fans of Arsenal that had really left just from themselves getting back into the cheer mode and obviously gave eat all that it deserved down at the Emirates. Then Bukayo Saka came in through and really saved a point for a side known as Arsenal and that's how the entire game of football really went. But the fighting spirit was there. After the game, all the players just found themselves go down in disbelief. They just saw themselves go down in disbelief because they had found themselves in a situation of really losing out onto another three points so <clears throat> it's really painful to arsenal fans all over the world because the way arsenal came in through and obviously put in such a bad performance at emirates <clears throat> everyone was shocked having found it hard for arsenal to win away from home we thought that maybe at Emirates, with 60,000 fans behind them it's going to be easy for them to come in through and obviously do the need for and, really, and obviously really win this game easily but i was shocked at half time that the game ended to one <clears throat> you know the game ended to one and i asked myself what is the mentality really in the dressing room of arsenal the players have gone ahead to give up totally you know <clears throat> they've gone ahead to give up totally and i like the response of Bokai Saka today as i told you that the best apology for a player is not to go all out on social media and post the best apology for a player is to come out and obviously put out a very good performance today Bokai Saka he has found himself creating an assist or a goal for Martinez. that was the first one then he scored the third one meaning that he has taken his tally of goals to 13 and his assist to 11 remember he had last scored in the game of was it Crystal Palace? I think that's when he last scored. I think it was a game of Crystal Palace, right? That's when he last scored the second. I think he even scored a brace by then. So, Saka <clears throat> needed that. He needed that to jumpstart his career again because the previous three games, he has been really playing very well. Sorry, very badly. So, this game, he got himself an assist and he got himself a goal. I think it's going to take him to the game of City at least more confident to really win off this game of football. Martinelli again, scoring. I think taking his tally to, is it 15 goals in the league? So it shows you that he's really another player that is not dropping off, you know? And uh, <clears throat> it calls out 
for lots of things. Martin Odegaard, having scored in the game of West Ham, is going to hit to score again today. And I think that is his 12th goal of the Premier League season. And I think if you are having t people that can really score those goals, all you need to work on, or if I told you I'm Kela Tata, is to keep it tight at the back. And how are they going to keep it tight at the back? I think they should really re-strengthen re their midfield. One will say that we missed going to Xhaka, but guys, in the previous two games that Arsenal have been playing, Xhaka has been playing 90 minutes and Arsenal has been conceding two goals per game. Even today, the goals that Arsenal conceded, Xhaka wouldn't have had any control over those, you know? <clears throat> and Thomas Partey, guys, something has to be done on Thomas Partey. When you're going in the game of Man City, you wouldn't like to see Thomas Partey playing like that. You know, losing balls in how we, you know, decision making is bad. I don't know exactly what is wrong with Thomas Partey, but all I can let you know is that Arsenal have gone ahead to capitulate again into the mix of that beautiful game of football down into the Emirates Stadium. But let's go and see what the stats were on the day. Arsenal had 25 shots, Southampton had 8. Out of the 25, Arsenal had 6 shots on target. That is very alarming and very uncalled for. You cannot have those 12 shots and 6 only on target. At least we are supposed to be having 10, 11, 12 shots on target. Meaning that Arsenal, had, Arsenal lacked composure in front of God. 6 shots on target by Southampton out of the 8. You see what we call composure. You know, they had 8 shots and 6 were read on target. Then 75% ball possession by Arsenal. Southampton had 25%. 660 passes completed by Arsenal. 234 passes completed by Southampton. 86% passing accuracy by Arsenal. Southampton had 64%. Percent passing accuracy. 10 fouls by Arsenal, 14 by Southampton, one yellow card to Arsenal, it went to Zinchenko, and five yellow cards to Southampton, zero red cards to both sides, one offside to Arsenal and two offsides to Southampton, seven corners to Arsenal and two corners for a side called Southampton, where they even found themselves getting the third goal from that set piece that they really last got into the game. When you look at the table, Asma is having 32 games played. They've won 23 games, drawn 6, lost 3, 77. 77 <coughs> goals scored. They've considered 34 and they're having a goal difference of 43 and 75 points. Now, Man City has played 30 games, won 22, drawn 4, lost 4, 78 goals scored, 28 goals conceded. The goal difference is 50. The goal difference is 50. Then <clears throat> they're having 70 points, meaning that if City win their, their two games they have in hand, they are going to go at 76 points. <clears throat> That's it. Now, this has brought the battle back to a level of Arsenal doing the needful and obviously beating Man City. If Arsenal still want to keep their title winning hopes alive, they should beat City. They should beat City in any ways. <laughs> That's it. That's the only the only chance Arsenal has got to really keep themselves into the title race. Because if at all they beat City, even if City win their two games they have in hand, Arsenal will be having 78 points and City will be having 76. But can Arsenal go there and really get three points? With the way we've seen them concede goals, today against West Ham and against Liverpool. So you worry a little bit of how Arsenal really going to go ahead and really make it through because even the table is looking more nasty. Look, United has played 30 games. They're having 59 points. They are 16 points behind Arsenal, meaning that if United find themselves with their two games they have in hand, they'll be at 60. They'll be at 65 points. 10 points behind Arsenal, and if Arsenal happen to lose to Man City and Man United win, they'll be 7 points behind Manchester United. So, it shows you that pressure is increasing, and even if Arsenal doesn't stop the capitulation, they might find themselves even being dislodged out of the second position. One will say, Rokani, that's a dream. It's not a dream because who knew that Arsenal would go ahead and really draw three games consecutively? Liverpool, West Ham, and Southampton. All right. For Liverpool, 
even if they drew, you know, or they lost the game of football, everyone would have said, yeah, it's okay. For me, I was happy with the point for Arsenal. They got out at Liverpool. That's it. But for West Ham and Southampton, we all knew that at least that was going to be a sure win for a side known as Arsenal, you know. But Arsenal found themselves in a position of not losing any of those games, but they've lost three points. To me, Arsenal would have gone ahead to lose to Liverpool and win these other games because those would have been three points dropped and six gained. But out of the possible nine, Arsenal has only gone ahead to gain three. If at all they had lost the game of Liverpool and won against West Ham and Southampton, they would have gone ahead to collect four more, sorry, three more out of the three they've collected in each of the previous three games Arsenal's gonna hate to play. So I think it's really bad for Arsenal. Mikel Arteta needs to do something on this. He needs to do something on this and I don't know what he's going to do. I think the solution is simple that William Saliba should get in back. And I remember very well coming here and telling you that the most important players of Arsenal that I really read to you were Jesus, Odegaard, Saliba, Thomas Partey and Zinchenko, you know, and and Ramsdale. Those are the six players I mentioned that if you are not even having the others and you're having that six, you know, it's the spine of Arsenal. If Arsenal are having that spine, they'll find themselves in a position of really beating any team. You know? It had it had it it last up it had it had last up in 30 years a team seated at the bottom of the table to beat the team topping the table towards this time as we enter the final bend of the season and Arsenal we are going to really break that record again if at all they called in for that result of a loss but you'd like to give Arsenal some positive some positive vibes and positive credits because they really fought back well they really fought back well you never know that point that they've gotten today might really push them to go to Etihad if at all they get a win and on the day of lifting the trophy they reminded oh that day we really came back in the game of Southampton when we are two goals down is the day that's gonna hit to give us this trophy because City is also tired because the players of City never even celebrated in Bayern Munich because they were tired meaning that at a point X they are going to drop some points they'll have to drop some points at a certain point x so let's wait and see how things are going to pan out down in down in in Manchester that is next wednesday because Arsenal are going to be taking on a team known as Manchester City and that's it so for Mikel Arteta one thing i liked about him today is to go for the game what he did today is what he had to do when Arsenal was playing against <clears throat> when Arsenal was playing against West Ham. There was no reason of keeping uh, Grant Jack on the field of play when you were wanting a win. Arsenal had to go for the game, bring on Trossard, keep Jesus on like today, you know, keep Bokayo Saka on, keep Martinelli on and see what the result is going to be because you would have gone ahead to leave Thomas Partey in the single pivot then Odegaard and Trossard would have gone ahead to pale more pressure onto that team of West Ham and they would have gone ahead to capitulate and really give you the best that they deserve but Mikel Arteta found himself in a position of really playing it safe away from home and he thought that maybe a point was really possible but like he did today that's what he had to go ahead and do at the side of West Ham and I think He's still a young manager learning on the job, but things aren't going the way he's really trying them to go away. So, guys, your thoughts on to Arsenal 3, Southampton 3 are welcome in the comment section below. That has been my match reaction. Rock and David remains my name. Smash the like button, comment, and share. I sign out for now. See you later. But I think Arsenal has handed the trophy over to Man City. Now, ever since the season started, the trophy has always been in the hands of Arsenal. This time around, Arsenal's gonna hate to hand it over to City. If City can win all their games they have in hand, if if, if, a City, if City can win all their games they have, you know, it's going to be a done deal. It's going to be done and dusted. And Arsenal is going to host teams like Chelsea, Brighton, at Emirates. If they are playing like that, it's really going to be so much hurting and horrible. But 
only one thing should Arsenal fans should pray for William Saliba to return. If he returns, I've seen him in the stands in wonder of how that team is really capitulating without him. So, I'm out guys. See you later. I'm returning with the player ratings.